Welcome to Demystifying Math. In this lesson, we're going to be discussing the component form of vectors and vector addition. A vector represents anything that has both size and direction. We often hear the term magnitude instead of size when referring to vectors, but it just represents things like length or speed or mass. Direction measures things in degrees, radians, revolutions, or anything like that that gives us a direction. Vectors, then, are used to represent things such as velocity, which is speed plus direction, displacement, force, torque, anything that has both direction and magnitude. Vectors are typically drawn as directed line segments. In other words, a line segment that has an arrowhead. The endpoint is where the arrowhead is located. Vectors are also often represented by using points on the coordinate plane. I've drawn a vector v that has a starting point at 2, 4 and an end point at 7, 6. It's showing both magnitude and direction. We can find the magnitude of the vector pretty easily when it's given on the coordinate plane by just using the distance formula. So our difference between our x values is 7 minus 2. Our two y values are 6 and 4. So simplifying this, we get the square root of 29. That gives us our magnitude how long the line segment is. Now, the other thing that we want to do is find the direction, and that's going to be given in degrees or radians or anything like that. We're going to do this one in degrees, so we're really measuring the angle off the horizontal. So, drawing a line horizontal to the, or parallel to the x-axis, a horizontal line, and then another one that's parallel to the y-axis, we get a right triangle there. So that's going to make it pretty easy for us to find the measure of angle theta in terms of degrees by using right triangle trig. So the opposite side of the angle is 2, and the adjacent side is 5. So we want to find theta by using tan theta equals 2 fifths. So using our arc tan of 2 fifths, we get 21.8 degrees. So now we've identified both the magnitude and the direction of the vector. Two vectors are considered to be equal if they have both the same magnitude and direction. Looking at vectors v and u, you should see that those two vectors are parallel, which means that their angle with the horizontal would be the same. We also probably notice that they look like they have the same magnitude or the same size or the same length. So let's use our distance formula to verify that. The magnitude of vector u can be found by subtracting our x-coordinates, and in this case, our starting point was at 0, 0. So that makes it really easy for us to find the magnitude of vector u. So we have the square root of 29, which was the same as vector v that we found earlier. And then if we wanted to find our angle alpha, well, the opposite side is still 2, the adjacent side is still 5, so we're getting the angle 21.8. So these two vectors are considered to be equal. We have a special name for vector u. It's called the component form of vector v. It's the component form of a vector when the starting point of the vector is at the origin. You can easily find the component form of a vector by subtracting your x-coordinates and subtracting your y-coordinates. So for vector v, in order to find vector u, all we would do is subtract our x-coordinates, which are 7 and 2, and then subtract our y-coordinates, which are 6 and 4. And that's how we get vector u, which is a 5, 2. Vector u would also be the component form of any vector that is equal to vector v, because they would all have the same size and the same direction. After writing a vector in component form, we can easily find the sum of the two vectors. In the drawing that we have here, we have a vector that ends at the ordered pair 2, 5, and a second vector that ends at the ordered pair 4, 3. The sum of those vectors is shown to be 6, 8, and we got that by adding together our x-coordinates, 2 and 4, to get our x-coordinate of the sum, and then add together our y-coordinates to get the y-coordinate of the sum, 6, 8. Now, remember that 
vector for 3 is given in component form. It can actually be drawn anywhere on the coordinate plane that we want. So we're going to redraw vector 4, 3, so its starting point is at 2, 5. And notice now that we've done that, the end point of vector 4, 3 lands at 6, 8. And that's why we call 6, 8 the sum of the two vectors. The majority of the time, all the vectors are going to be drawn in their component form. So just kind of keep this visual in mind when you try to do some of the problems. So I wanted you to get a better feel for where the sum of the two vectors will be. So we have um, vectors a and b here. And what I'm going to do is move them around on the coordinate plane. And as I do, you should see what happens to the sum of the two vectors. So notice as I move vector a counterclockwise, AB kind of follows the new um, position of vector A. We also call AB the sum, the resultant vector. So usually when you hear the term resultant vector, it's referring to the sum of two vectors. Now I can also move vector B, so you can kind of see what's happening. And as I move vector B down, notice that it's now coordinates are in quadrant 4 which means that its y values are negative. So you notice that AB is kind of shrinking because I'm really adding a negative to vector A. So I'm taking away from it. And if I go over into quadrant 3, notice that I have both my x and y coordinates are negative. And you can see how that affects the sum AB. You should also notice that AB is always in between vectors a and b on the smallest, in between the smallest angle between a and b. So notice as I go past them being um, at a straight angle, vector a, b, the sum is going to be in between on the other side, so it flips over. So it's always going to be in between those two. So just so you can see a little bit better, um, we can also change the size, for instance, of vector b. And notice that's going to increase the sum, of course. And you can do the same thing for vector A, you can make it smaller, which causes AB to shrink, and then make it larger. So sometimes they are um, actually pulling um, that AB around by changing the magnitude or the direction of vectors A and B. So we typically give the sum of the two vectors in component form. And if you're subtracting vectors, it's the same as adding the opposite of the vectors. So just change your signs if you're subtracting, and then do the same thing as we would for adding. Thank you for tuning in to Demystifying Math.